in our previous video, we covered the basics of PCI DSS formatting. PCI DSS has six codes which are broken down at 12 requirements. So here, we deep dive into those requirements. What are the changes that PCI DSS 4.0 brings on the requirement level? There's a total of 64 changes made to requirements in PCI DSS 4.0. These changes are split between evolving requirement changes, clarification of guidance changes, and structure of format changes. 13 of these changes are effective immediately for all 4.0 assessments, and 51 are best practices until 31st March 2025, after which they become compulsory. So, 12 requirements, let's take a look at the changes that PCI DSS 4.0 attempts. Requirement number one, install and maintain network security controls. Network security controls, such as firewalls, are network enforcement parts that typically control network traffic based on some predefined policies or rules. Traditionally, this function has been provided by physical firewalls. However, now this can be provided by virtual devices, cloud access controls, virtualization and such hot container systems, and more. Requirement two, apply secure configurations to all system components. Malicious individuals, both internal and external to an organization, often use default passwords and other vendor default settings to compromise systems. These passwords and settings are pretty well known and easily available on the internet. So changing default passwords, removing unnecessary software, functions, accounts, and services, all help to reduce the potential attack surface. Requirement three, protect stored account data. Payment account data should not be stored unless it is necessary to meet the needs of your business. If your organization stores primary account numbers, well, it is crucial to render it unreadable. If your company stores sensitive authentication data prior to the completion of authorization, that data should also be protected. Requirement four, protect cardholder data with strong cryptography during transmission over open public networks. To protect against attacks, primary account numbers must be encrypted during transmission over networks. Misconfigured wireless networks and vulnerabilities in encryption and authentication protocols are frequently targeted by malicious individuals aiming to exploit and smuggle. So, primary account number transmissions can be protected by encrypting the data before it is transmitted or by encrypting the session over which the data is transmitted or both. Requirement number five, protect all systems and networks from malicious software. Malicious software, or malware as it's more commonly known, is software designed to infiltrate and damage a computer system without the owner's knowledge or consent. So, viruses, worms, trojans, spyware, ransomware, keyloggers, rootkits, malicious holes, strips, and links. It's important to guard against all malware because they can enter the network during many business approved activities, like in emails via phishing, or storage devices like pen drives. Requirement number six develop and maintain secure systems and software. Any security vulnerabilities in systems and applications may allow criminals to access sensitive payment data. Many of these vulnerabilities are eliminated by installing vendor-provided security patches. All system components must have the most recently released critical security patches installed to prevent exploitation. Organizations should also aim to apply patches to less critical systems in an appropriate time frame, based on a form and risk analysis, of course. Requirement seven, restrict access to cardholder data by business need to know. Need to know refers to providing access to only the least amount of data needed to perform a job. Least privileges refers to only providing the minimum level of privileges needed to perform a job. Unauthorized individuals may gain access to critical data or systems due to ineffective access control tools, and so, Ensure critical data can only be accessed by authorized personnel. There should also be systems and processes in place to limit access based on need to know according to job responsibilities. Requirement number eight, identify users and authenticate access to system components. Assigning a unique identification to each person with access ensures actions taken on critical data and systems are performed by and can be traced to known and authorized users. That includes point of sale accounts, those with administrative capabilities, and all accounts used to view or access payment account data. Requirement number nine, restrict physical access to cardholder data. Physical access to cardholder data or systems that store, process, or transmit cardholder data should be restricted so that unauthorized individuals cannot access or remove systems containing this data. Requirement number 10, log and monitor all access to system components in cardholder data. Logging mechanisms and the ability to track user activities are critical for the detection of anomalies and suspicious activities and for effective forensic analysis. The presence of logs in all environments allows thorough tracking and analysis if something goes wrong. Determining the cause of a compromise is difficult, if not impossible, without well-maintained active logs. Requirement number 11, test security of systems and networks regularly. Vulnerabilities are constantly being discovered by malicious individuals and well-meaning researchers alike. System components, processes, and custom software should be tested frequently to ensure security controls continue to reflect a changing environment. Finally, requirement number 12, 
support information security with organizational policies and programs. A strong security policy sets the tone for security in your entire organization, and it informs employees of their expected duties in relation to data security. All employees should be aware of the sensitivity of payment account data and their responsibilities for protecting it. If you're looking to get PCI DSS 4.0 compliant, there's a couple of things you need to know. PCI DSS version 3.2.1 will be retired on March 31st, 2024, and PCI DSS version 4.0 will be the only active version of the standard after. That means if you're looking to get PCI DSS compliant, the clock is ticking and you will need to start soon. The same holds true if you're looking to renew your PCI DSS compliance. Adopting PCI DSS isn't easy. With over 300 plus controls, doing PCI DSS manually is extremely expensive, both in terms of price and effort. In pure dollar cost alone, PCI DSS certification for a medium to large organization costs between fifty dollars to $200,000. But for a small to medium organization, you could incur anywhere between $5,000 to $20,000. And these price tags don't include invisible costs like human effort, product deprioritization, and miss deadlines due to engineering bandwidth, all of which are costly in their own care. Solution? Compliance automation. Customers that use printer to get PCI DSS compliant save up to 80% of their time and effort, and with continuous monitoring, they stay compliant to year round. Learn how you can get PCI DSS compliant with compliance automation by visiting sprinter.com or booking a demo with one of our PCI DSS experts by clicking the link in the description. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. We'll get back to you as soon as possible.